Okay, so the next thing we're going to start to talk about um, here is we're going to start thinking about the termination of employment um, because really at the end of the day, employment can voluntarily end or through redundancy, the end of a contract, it could be resignation or just the actual act of termination or it might even be the induction period uh, we've decided to part company. All right, now as an employer, there are a few steps that you're going to have to take in order to comply with uh, the law and make sure your business continues to operate as smoothly as possible. Obviously, there can be a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, things caught up in, uh, in the termination of employment, you know, whichever way, even if it's their decision to go, can be fairly hot and heated. Um, sometimes it can, you know, be perfectly fine as well. But there's some things that we can really do to, to improve the process, minimise disruption and make sure that everyone feels that they got their say. And some of the things you might look at is things like the exit interview. And the exit interview, okay, on their way out, You know, that, that's a great thing to have in order to discover from the employees what it is we could do differently for the other employees or things that we can improve in our organization. Um, remember, they're on their way out now, so they're more inclined to just to tell you exactly what they think. Um, you know, you can find out, you know, if they're going to another company, what is it that other company offered that we didn't? Um, if they're going somewhere else, well, why are they going somewhere else? If they're leaving, was there any concerns that they had or is it just, that, you know, that time was up and that was it and they've moved on? Um, you know, better that we know that than not know that. So there's a bunch of questions we can ask. And the first one is, well, why are you leaving? You know, now if we've dismissed them, pretty obvious, okay? But if they've just come in on Monday and said, look, thank you very much, really appreciated the time, I'm moving on to a different organization, we might ask, was there any particular reason that you chose to do that? Okay, once again, it's not an interrogation, they're doing us a favor, they're answering that, okay? Um, you know, and you might ask, you know, what's the difference between what, you know, if they're going to a different uh, company, um, what's the difference between what we're offering you here in your position and what they're offering you? Are they offering you a promotion? Are they offering, you know, we just need to get a bit of an idea. If the person's moving for career progression um, and we've got a vacancy, that might be a time for us to say, well, are you aware that we also had a vacancy? Um, you know, what you might be trying to do there is if it's a good quality person, you don't want them to go, um, you might be able to salvage that relationship and retain a high quality employee. Um, sometimes just a misunderstanding, those sort of things. Um, you can ask, you know, are the future benefits better? Okay, are the future benefits better? And get them to describe them if you can. The reason being is that they might also be under a misunderstanding about what you're offering and they might be looking to go to a different company because they thought there was an extra perk only to find out, well, they could have got that here as well. Um, and that's been missed. So this is once again to try and um, to capture them before they make that final decision to go. At this stage, they're sort of saying they're exiting, they have not exited, okay? So hopefully you can get in before that and stop it if it's not actually what you want to happen. Um, you could also ask, what would you change here? Okay, and what we're talking about then is what would they change in the organization, okay? If, if you put them in charge tomorrow, what would they do differently? Um, what, what would they give to the employees that you're not currently covering? Or how could you basically make it better? All right. um, the idea is just to try and elicit from them some of the key changes that you could make. Um, and some of them can be really simple that you just never thought of. So, you know. Um, you could also ask them to describe the management. Okay, so, you know. How have you found the management? You know, how did they engage with you? How did you find their leadership? How did you find that? So, um, you know, try, trying to get um, a little bit of an understanding about how they saw their managers, because you might find actually, look, they've got no relationship with their managers, and you might need to do something about that organizationally as well and find out what's going wrong. Um, you might also ask things like, um, you know, how have we missed, you know, um, reward recognition? Okay, so what we're talking about there is what, what reward or recognition have we put in? Did they make a contribution that they felt didn't get noticed? Um, you, know, you know, have they done something that we didn't notice? And that sort of went, well, you know, they just felt that, well, you know, I come in here, I do this job every day, I do this, I do this, these are all the great things I did, and no one said anything to me about it. So, you know what, I'm going elsewhere because, you know, they, they at least know who I am. Um, you might also think about, you know, if you're talking about the managers up here, um, their effect on performance. Okay, how does the way they've been managed affect their performance day to day? Was it a positive thing? Was it a negative thing? Did it have no effect? Okay, how did it work? And also, who were your mentors? You know, who did you enjoy working with? Okay, so who were your mentors? Who were your coaches? 
who was putting in and helping you out and what did you enjoy working with, all right? So, you know, that, those can be some pretty good things to ask. And if you actually had some pretty good answers to that, it's really gonna give you a bit of a guide of what's going on. If they say, look, you know, I changed heaps of stuff, the management was non-existent, I didn't have any mentors and all that, that's a bit of a sign for you to start fixing things. Um, the reward and recognition, if they felt it got missed, okay, then, you know, that's a good sign for you to fix that up. If all of these are positive and they're going somewhere else, well, you have to ask why, why not just stay? Or maybe they just feel like a change. Fair enough, look, they've got their reasons, but as they go out, at least make the most of it. Don't just make a wasted opportunity. Okay, so at that point, what you'll need to do is you'll probably need to prepare them an exit letter, um, a reference or a statement of employment where applicable. Some organizations won't give a reference. Um, it's quite normal now not to get a reference at all, particularly from large companies. All they give is a, um, is a statement of employment that says that you worked for them, when you worked for them, and usually the nature of the job at most, you know, position description or something like that, and it's just a statement of fact. There are no opinions, um, there is no reference to it, it just tells a potential employer what you've been doing from the company and the company's letterhead. Um, the other thing you'll need to do is at that point, you need to make sure that you've got a proper handover, so you get back any keys, um, you know, pass cards, etc. cetera, um, so all that administrative stuff handed over, final pay, etc. but also to hand over any work they had. So if there's any projects or tasks that are still outstanding, that that's handed over, um, that the details are handed over those things, so you, know, you don't have this massive um, disconnect later on. All right, if you can, fill the job as quickly as possible behind them so that the next person's ready to go um, you know, before necessarily they even leave. If you've got a little bit of you know, time, start, employ start, start looking now so that there's as least disruption in the business as possible. Make sure you set up that exit interview so on the last day you do make sure you've checked all these things and it's um, thoroughly clarified. And once they've left, obviously cancel them off your systems, leave pass cards, all that sort of stuff, pin numbers, security numbers, all that gone, and make sure that any um, laptops, valuables, anything like that they've got, um, safety gear, etc. basically anything that you guys own comes back to you. Okay, with regards to that, Make sure that you've uh, followed the law. Fair Work Australia, make sure you look up um, unfair dismissal and unlawful termination. Understand the difference there about making sure you're not just sacking people or doing the wrong thing. Uh, make sure you're abreast of all the legal considerations there. Uh, treat people with dignity. It's not an ego thing. If they're going and even if you've dismissed them, let them go quietly and politely into the night. Um, don't make a huge fuss of it. Make sure that they feel supported and that you follow the letter of the law. You've treated them with dignity. Um, you've made sure that uh, your replacement in your business is going to continue on as business as usual, um, and you've taken all the administrative steps you require to make sure that it all happens well. Learn from it. It's going to happen. People are going to come in and out of your business. Um, what you don't want to do is lose an opportunity out of it. So think about the, um, the termination stage of that. As I say, you know, this is just a primer on it. It's not the full detail. Just to give you a bit of an idea about the things you need to do, even if it's just for the new guy coming in, as they're rolling back out again, um, you might still ask this to find out why the disconnect. All right, cool. Hopefully that sums it up for you. Um, good luck out there with your recruitment.